This is Kevin Murphy with Go Power Sports. We're fixing to decrate and assemble our mid XRXR cart. We're going to start out by removing our nuts and bolts. We have a 10 millimeter bolt and a 13 millimeter nut on the inside. And we have those at every single location that you see a bar that's going to need to be removed. All right, now that we have our frame unbolted, we can pull it off of the main. Take it all the way up so you don't scratch it all up. Now we're gonna come back and start removing our braces. We've got a brace here, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter nut. These are the same 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. We also have the brackets back here that holding our main shaft axle two 10 millimeters. Same thing on the other side, both brackets. Just put the clip out the way. And our two 10 millimeters up the top. Off the bracket, other side. One last bracket here holding the back axle. Now we're gonna to have to lift it up and put it on a stand so we can put our tires on. All right, so we need to take off all these components and set them aside so we can lift our cart up and start putting the tires on. All right, you just need to take all your bubble wrap off your pieces that you're working with and set them aside. Your row bars are zip strapped on so they don't move around in shipping. Now you can remove them. To get the bubble wrap off, you're gonna have a zip strap in the center. And two pieces of bubble wrap. Set it aside. Now what you're gonna do with your seats, because your seat belts are still attached, you're just going to move them out of your way for now. You have all your tires up in here. On occasions, the back tires are not aired up, then you'll have to air them up. We will be going over, checking each valve stem to make sure they're nice and tight and nothing's leaking. Front tires are skinnier, back tires are fatter. Your back tires are gonna have splines. Your front tires are gonna be free spinning on a bearing. Still removing all your components and setting them aside. Your gas tank's going to be all the way in the bottom. And 
one of the shocks are always mounted. One of the shocks have always been removed. So we'll have to put all that back in. Your battery comes in a box and then you have a bag with all nuts, bolts, steering wheel, foam insulation that goes on some of your row bars and we'll get to that in a minute. Two pieces of foam will be going right here on this row bar. Right here on this row bar, we'll install them here in a minute. Battery straps. All the nuts, bolts, screws that you're gonna need for this installation. All the tire bushings to hold the, bearing, the bolts and the rest you can set aside. Now, for your tire nuts and cotter keys, they are going to be attached to the top frame up here. These are all the nuts and bolts that hold on your tire. Also comes with your key for the ignition. My last piece is a support brace for the row bar and it's always tucked way up in there. Okay, we're gonna start putting tires on, which means we need to lift the front end, put something up underneath the front end while we're dealing with the tires. We're using the small tires for the front, big tires for the back. You need to have the valve stem on the outside and the arrows of the tread will tell you which direction it's going. Before we put our tires on, we're gonna want to double check our castle nuts are nice and tight on our struts. This is the steering. Without moving the cotter pin that's locking it into place, we're gonna make sure it's nice and snug, which it is. I'm using a 17 millimeter wrench on this. We also need to check the top to make sure it's nice and snug. So we're not having to pull these cotter keys out. Okay, we're gonna check the last piece here, which is your tie rod end. We're gonna go up underneath here with a 12 millimeter socket to make sure this is also tight. All right, we got it all nice and tight, ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and start assembling our tires. You're gonna need a washer, then the locking nut, and then we're gonna put a cotter key in this. In your bag of nuts and bolts, you're going to find some cotter keys, and they're different sizes, one for the front, one for the back. The back ones are slightly larger than the front ones. So on your castle nut, we have multiple slots where you can slide these in. You need to make sure you're nice and tight, not too tight. You want to spin your tire before you tighten this up and until that slows down. Then you're going to find the hole in the shaft. Then you're going to find that once you tighten it up, you're going to put your cotter key in. Once you get it locked down, bent over, we're going to put a cap on here to cover all that up. Comes in a bag with all your caps for all tires. Give it a little twist and it'll go right up in there and there you go. 
get the other side done. Nice and tight. Excellent, excellent. Got a key in the hole. Using a ball peen hammer just to tap in the key. I use one of these picks so I can turn them, spin them, do whatever I need to do with them. And then we put our cap back on and be done with this one. Go to the back, do it again. I'm just putting the seats back out of my way so I can work on the back half of this cart now. Pretty much on this bar is what I'm resting on. You could rest on here if you want, if it's tall enough. Next, we're gonna do the back suspension and then we're gonna put the tires on there after. So your back suspension, your shocks are disconnected. We're gonna go ahead and pull the bolt so we can get ready to attach this in. We're just gonna set this aside for now. We're gonna to do to the other side. This is where the support bracket's built onto, so you'll have to take both top and bottom of your bolts out. When you take this off, this is gonna to wanna to try to fold up on you, so you might wanna put something underneath here or hold it in that position. The spring's gonna go on the top side of it, and the bottom is the base right here. You're just gonna, once you get this on, you're gonna pick it up even further, slide that bottom bolt in, and then you can start assembling your shocks. Don't forget the other side. Don't tighten anything up until you put both shocks on. Go back to the bolt we put aside, and we're gonna have to pick this side up also. And as you can see, they slid right in. Tighten them up. All right, now we can start assembling the tires on the back. got 24 millimeter tassel nuts and washer and again you have to put in a cotter key inside all of this Bend it up, and then we're gonna hit it with the ball peen hammer to flatten the key out. And then you can put your cap on it. All it takes is pushing it in, a little twist, and it should go into the groove. And put your cap on. And we're good. What we're gonna go ahead and do is start putting the gas tank on and then we'll start with the row bars. Your gas tank is curved, your row bar, your bar here is curved, so you want to run the gas tank curved like that. Fits right in there. 10 millimeter bolts down to a 10 millimeter nut. Put all your bolts in before you tighten anything up.
You're gonna find a ventilation hose for your carburetor tank, gas tank over here. You're gonna pull it out of the little hole. You're gonna reroute it to the vent, which is on top. You got a little clamp, Old, pull it back, push it in, clamp it on. So your fuel line is going to be laying down here. It's got a little spring on it to keep it from off the motor. You're going to take your hose. You're going to clamp it right up in here. And then you got your little finger clamp to clamp it in right there. We're going to go with the row bars next. So we're going to start with the very long row bars. We're going to take one of our insulations and we're going to put the insulation in between the holes. And that's between this hole and this hole. You're going to be sitting this away. You're going to put your front on first. And then we're going to come back here and put the back on. Sometimes it doesn't go all the way in, so it's good to have a rubber mallet. You get a rubber mallet, and you can get it the rest of the way down until you get to your hole opening. In our nuts and bolts that we're going to assemble with, we have special washers and bolts. These are concaved to fit the pipe. So you're going to put one inside. You're going to slide it inward. It's going to go in. Of course, it's not going to go in. Sometimes we need a little bit more encouragement. You're going to use the same type of washer, concave, towards the pipe, back in it. Put your nut on it. And do not tighten any of these down, just finger tight, until we get all of it assembled. Same thing on the front. Same with the washers, concave to go into the pile. Okay, we'll try this again. Again with the rubber mallet to make sure everything fits in proper. Uh, it's best actually to probably put screws in before you start messing with the back. That way it holds itself in. And as you can see, some of them slide right in without a problem. Okay, now we're going to put the cross piece in over here, and then we're going to have a single piece going in down here. Usually I have all these already set up gotcha. like this, because when you're going into the frame, you don't use the second washer okay. or the nut. Now when you get these, you want to line these up where the concave is in line with, see that one's off. So you want to twist these around till they fit. This is the front part here, and it curves down the back side here so you know exactly how it fits into place. So again, you want to make sure these line up. And again, do not tighten all these down until you get all the pieces together. First, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the nuts and bolts in the side here. Okay. 
Sometimes these are not true, so you have to use your impact to run the screws through. Sometimes these do not fit snug, so sometimes you have to, since you're loosening this up, you're gonna push this over, and then you can drive your nut, your bolts in. And again, that's why you leave all your nuts and bolts loose so you have movement to assemble. Again, if it's a little off, use your impact to get it in. You gotta make sure these are turned the right direction. And again, with the same, we're gonna push this over. little tweaking and put it in. Now we're gonna do that last crash bar. Now that you have all your nuts and bolts assembled, now we can tighten this frame up now. So we're gonna start on one corner and we're gonna work all the way around the cart till we get back here so we don't forget anything and then we'll go over each nut and bolt and make sure it's nice and snug. You wanna make sure all your washers are in the concaved area and hold them in place. Same thing with these, you wanna make sure the concaves are that away, not that away. This away, not this away. I'm gonna go over all the nuts and bolts with my impact. If you do not watch out and go too hard on these, you can crush these pipes in half. So be careful not to impact these too tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the steering wheel on, then we'll put the battery in, then we'll put the seats on, and then we'll get some gas and oil in here after we check some chain tensioning on the back here. And all of our connection pieces here, we're going to check to make sure they're all nice and tight. This is your shifter point here. We're going to make sure our chain's nice and tight where it needs to be and not too tight. So let's go. Install the steering wheel. 
The flat side goes down. As you can see, there's only three bolt holes here, so it can only go in one way. What size are these? These are 10 millimeter nut and bolts. If you're impacting these down, you need to be gentle. These will, bolts will snap off on you. You also have a cap that comes with it. You need to install the top clip first or it will break. Top clip is gonna be straight up. Ain't that cute. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna install the battery, the battery box, the strap, and the cover to the unit. We're gonna move the seat out of our way. That's why we haven't attached it anywhere. Just move it to the side. You know, battery box holder is right here. We just need to move some things out of our way. We have a rubber piece that goes on the bottom. You got all our nuts and bolts for our battery. Then your battery goes in. Terminals facing the front. You have wires that are color coordinated. Red to red, black to blue. I always do red first because if you touch ground to ground, nothing's gonna happen. If positive's on there and ground's not grounded, nothing's gonna happen. So I always do positive first. I always do the hot side first. That way, if anything grounds out, there's not connected. what we're going to do is put the cover on sometimes these are hard to put your strap on because of the extra room that this provides you have a hook here in the back you have another hook here in the front i've got it hooked in the back and i'm going to hold the battery down as i pull and stretch and i'm going to hold it down and attempt to get this down there I'm going to peel the plastic off these seats. You don't have to if you don't want to. I like to because if the sun's too hot, they'll melt this plastic onto the seat. Doesn't look good. So as you see on our seats here, we have little indentations that's coming from the seat belts and other items as they're being shipped. Once this is out in the heat, all of that will straighten back out and stretch back out so you will not see that. We're gonna go ahead and grab the seat. We're gonna start peeling that plastic off. Now you have two pipes down here off the bottom of these seats. One here, one here. You got matching pipes here where these seats fit in. Pull your seat belts all straight forward, make sure they're flush. I always clip all seat belts in. If you do not clip, especially this seat belt on the outer side, they drag the ground, they get damaged, and then you're buying a new one. Let's get over to the driver's side and do the same thing. All right, I'm gonna move this seat out the way. I'm gonna start working on the bottom plastics. And again, we have indentions okay. that the sun will heat up and straighten all that out. And again, that's from your seat belts. Okay. All right, so before we put this seat 
rip the plastic off of this and put the seat back. We're gonna check your oil. Your oil dipstick is right back here. All you gotta do is unscrew it and see what we got going on there. This oil is already filled up on this. This is fine oil to use. It's up to you whether you wanna change it out now or not. I do suggest using a high quality motor oil, Motorcraft, Pennzoil, whatever you'd like to use on it. Same thing with the passenger seat. You got two pipes here. You got two pipes down here that they fit into. Again, take all your seat belts, put them together so they're not dragging the ground. Now we're gonna come back here on the back side over here. I'm gonna get a wrench and we're gonna start checking all this to make sure all this gear shifter is tight and ready to go and then we'll start looking at our chain assembly okay this is your gear shifter here you want to make sure all your bolts or all your nuts are nice and tight so they don't come loose and then you can't shift between forward and reverse so all we're going to do is make sure these are nice and tight all right we're good all nice and tight on that thing there so we're going to start looking and making sure our chain I'm gonna come in here and give this a little bit of looseness. So I'm gonna come down here and there's gonna be a nut up above this that I'm gonna go up with. You can't see that right now because it's way back here in the back. And that's gonna allow me to drop this assembly down a little bit so I can get just a little bit of looseness on that chain. We're gonna come in here. I'm gonna loosen this nut up in here with a 17 millimeter. Okay, so I'm going to loosen this nut so we can lower this division because sometimes these chains are just a little too tight. Sometimes they're just right. I don't like this this tight, so I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit. Okay, this is a 17. This one's going to be an 18 millimeter. All I'm going to do is loosen this up some. Okay, as you can see, I can now move my chain so I've got nice and loose a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the bottom nut to lock her back down. We got some loosened in that chain now so it's no longer tight. We don't want it too tight. Next, I'm gonna start looking at the links, master link, make sure the clip is put on correctly. So we're going to take off the chain guard. We got two bolts here and here to take this off. We have one bolt in the front. We can get to by easily removing the seat and pushing it out of our way. Right here. Long bolt with a spacer. Do not lose your spacer. So here's your master link here. And as you can tell, the opening is in the back side and this goes this direction. So you have to have the closed side on the moving direction the open side needs to be on the back side of the direction so it goes this direction. So that master link is correct. All right, we're gonna put this reassemble. And the long one goes up front. We now have a bikini top that goes on the very top to block the sun out. Sometimes you have to stretch these a little bit to get them to fit. So when you put them on, you're gonna find there's a top piece that looks just like the metal rack that's up front. Goes right into it. 
just like a glove. Come back to the back part. What you're gonna wanna do is strap that up in there. You got Velcro underneath where they stick. Gonna do the same thing over here. I have to stretch it out a bit. Get your little Velcro markings. See the Velcro strap all the way across here. Do the same thing on the other side. Velcro's right here. Alrighty, last but not least, we have a flag for this. Comes with a rod, flag, and a little adapter to hook it up to. So we're gonna come back here to the back right hand corner. Sometimes it's in the center, sometimes it's on the other corner, depending on where the manufacturer wanted to put it. Bottom up, and it sits in a little groove. Screw this down into it, till it's snug, and then we can slide this in. I slide them down out of the way until you get ready to go play, and then you can bring them back up. you get it where you need it, tighten her down, and she's ready to go. Let's have fun. We got to gas her up and test drive her. What we're going to do is go ahead and give her some gas. In my opinion, it's easier to do it from inside. Now what I do to this, I come down here we're gonna turn the fuel on. And then we need fuel in this fuel filter. So what I do is, is I remove the gas line until it comes out just a little bit. And then I put her back in. Definitely wanna wait till the fuel is evaporated and then you can go run it. Sometimes you're gonna to have to idle up the idler screw on these carburetors just in case you start it up and it goes and turns back off. Your idler screw is way up underneath here. It's a really thick piece of plastic with Phillips head. You just need to turn it a little bit, start it up and try it again. So sometimes you just need to turn it clockwise to let it idle up so it doesn't die out on you. Now we're ready to take it for a test and see how it works. See you in a minute. All right, we got our kill switches here. Just hit the kill switch, turn the button off, and it's good to go. Now that everything's ready to run, you're ready to play. Have fun.